What's up, y'all? Welcome back. We are finally to a place where we're going to use our first circuit build example to collect physical measurements. Recall, that in this example, we had a single voltage source that provided a 5-volt drop from the red lead to the black lead. We have a single 1K resistor, 1 kilo ohm resistor. The circuit schematic for this particular circuit looks as such. You can see this on screen. Let's go ahead and switch over to the actual physical circuit. In this case, remember, this is a two element circuit because I have one, two elements. Each element is a two lead or two terminal element. In other words, the voltage source has one, two wires, one on the top, one on the bottom. The resistor has one, two wires and they're connected through the breadboard. Each element, in the last few videos, we've been talking about the voltage drop across an element and the current running through the element. These mathematical variables are gonna be the fundamental mathematical variables that we study in all physical circuits. In other words, every single element in the circuit has a voltage drop across an element and the current running through the element. We will see much later in our discovery that understanding the relationship between the voltage drop across and the current running through any particular element actually describes the electrical property of that element completely. Moreover, when we're talking about the mathematical problem of circuit analysis, figuring out what's happening on a circuit, if we can determine completely the voltage drop across any element and the current running through any element, we say that we have modeled that circuit completely. With that said, how many different mathematical variables do we expect in a circuit that has two elements? Well, let's think critically. Each element has two variables, the voltage drop across and the current running through. There are two separate elements, so we expect four mathematical variables to describe that circuit. Crazy, right? This is a four variable system and eventually we'll see that it's actually a system of equations. That's the whole point of this. In this case, we're not gonna work on the mathematics side, we're gonna work on the physical measurement side. Specifically, let's go ahead and measure all the variables in this circuit. To do so, we're gonna identify where these variables show up and we're also gonna identify the measurement polarity of those variables. So the first thing we'll do, let's go ahead and define the voltage drop across the resistor. We're gonna call that V sub R1. There's only one resistor, so we could not enumerate it in this case, but we're gonna get in the habit of every resistor we're gonna label with a number. And then we're gonna say in this situation, let's go ahead and define the polarity of this measurement as positive above the resistor and negative below the resistor. What that means is when I connect my actual multimeter, I'm gonna put the black lead on the bottom and the red lead on the top. And then when I collect the actual voltage measurement, that value gets stored as VR1. So in this case, we see that the measured value of VR1 is 4.96 with reference to that polarity. Next thing we're gonna do is actually measure current. In this situation, we'll turn this off. We'll go ahead and break the lead here. So. We'll depower that circuit by just taking that bottom part out. We'll take this top part here. When in our situation, what I'm going to say is every time we measure current, we're going to go from positive to negative. So in this case, when we look at the current running through resistor one, which we'll call IR1, that's going to go from the positive lead to the negative lead of our multimeter. In other words, I'm going to go ahead and write positive on the, this lead of the resistor, negative on that lead of the voltage source. Then we're going to go ahead and turn this on to the ammeter. We see that the mathematical variable of current running through the resistor gets a value of 5.12 milliamps. This is volts. Both of these are positive, and what that tells us is that the actual voltage drop in the circuit is in the same direction as my measurement polarity. So from here to there, this is a positive 4.96. 
that is zero with reference to that voltage measurement. Same thing over here, the 5.12 milliamps is actually in that same direction. So current is running from here this way. Let's go ahead and do the same measurement for our voltage source. So we reconnect this circuit. Next thing we're gonna do is measure the volt across the voltage source. Well, that actually is supposed to be five volts. So let's go ahead and define this. In this case, we'll call this V sub V1. That's the mathematical variable representing the voltage drop across that source. We're gonna connect the negative lead of our multimeter on the bottom and the positive lead on top. So that tells me the reference direction with which I'm collecting my data. Here we go, let's go ahead and connect the negative lead on the bottom. We'll connect the positive lead on top. We'll go ahead and make, whoa, that's really interesting, isn't it? It is not a coincidence that that voltage across that source is identical to the other one. That's called, in this case, Kirchhoff's voltage law. We'll get more into that later. So that's a positive 4.96 volts. Same thing, we will always say that when we define the reference direction for the current, that reference direction goes from positive to negative. Now, I know the electrical engineers that are watching are gonna be very upset with me because I'm breaking some rules, but I will claim that this paradigm of always maintaining the same direction in reference that goes from the positive to the negative is very, very helpful as we increase the complexity of our circuit. So in this case, let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll break the circuit leads. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and break the upper leads. And then notice I want my reference direction to go in the same polarity as that voltage source. So here, now our reference direction goes from red to black. When we measure this thing, whoa, check that out. I have a negative 5.12 milliamps, 5.12 milliamps. The reason that that's negative has to do with something called Kirchhoff's current law. This circuit has the same amount of current running through the resistor as the amount of current running through this voltage source. And in fact, they're in the same direction. And so when we say, hey, this current reference is this way and we get a negative number, it means that the actual physical current in the circuit is running directly opposite of that reference direction, which makes sense, right? This is a positive 5.12. The current would come up over here, run up through this voltage source, come out this way and kind of just circulate in this direction. In terms of the actual physics behind this, inside this battery, and then that's channeled through this voltage source, there, there's a chemical process by which there's charge separation. And so when we put the red to black across that resistor, what's happening is some of the electrons are running up towards the positive end because that's how the electric field works. We measure electron flow in the opposite direction. That's called current. And so the current is just continually running in, in a loop here. And that's why those two things are opposite of each other. When Every single circuit measurement, so the whole idea that we're looking at here is each element of a circuit has two mathematical variables. They have the voltage drop across that particular element and the current running through. We will always assume that when we set the reference direction, reference direction literally means where do I attach my negative lead, where do I attach my positive lead, when the measured value of this thing has a positive, it means that the actual circuit dynamics are in the same direction as our reference. When we have a negative attached, it means that the actual circuit dynamics are in the opposite direction. We're gonna get into a lot more of that, but I wanted to show that particular example. Now, the fun thing about this particular situation is the choices that we make on these references are arbitrary. We don't have to choose the way that we've done here. One thing that I will say is we will always assume that the reference direction on a voltage source is identical to the actual dynamics of the voltage source. So notice that the positive lead of the voltage source and the negative lead, that's supposed to be five volts. And we've set up our reference direction identical to that. However, we don't have to do that. So specifically, we could rerun this example 
And this time when we rerun it, we could actually define the variables for each one using different references. So we could say, hey, the voltage drop across the voltage source, instead of doing our reference direction so that it stays in the same direction as the actual voltage source, let's define it with opposite polarity. Let's go ahead and look at what would happen if we thought about connecting the red to the bottom and the black to the top. And then we will maintain the convention that anytime we measure current, we're gonna do it from the red to the black. So in this case, we would say that this is IV1. Same thing's true over here. We could similarly define the voltage drop across the resistor. We we'll call that the voltage drop across the first resistor with the opposite polarity what we did previously. We will always, always, always maintain the convention that when we measure current running through this, it's from the red to the black. So now the four mathematical variables that completely describe this circuit, we have defined the corresponding reference directions that we need to measure those. Now, let's go ahead and connect. So in this situation, we'll measure the voltage across the resistor first. So the voltage drop across the resistor, I say attach the red to the bottom and the black on top. Notice that is the exact opposite of the value that we got previously. Every voltage measurement has three quantities, the sign, the magnitude, and the unit. So here we've got negative 4.96 volts. Let's go ahead and deconnect the circuit. Uh, we'll do that down here. So the same reference direction that we use for voltage, we're gonna use for current. Go ahead and turn this off real quick. So now I go up here, check it out. It's the exact opposite, basically, of the measurement that we had previously. And that's because we have flipped our polarity. Let's go back to zero. In this case, we're gonna measure the voltage across the voltage source. Now, we already know what it should be. It should go positive five volts. But in this case, we're switching the polarity of our measurement. When we do so, check it out. It says negative 4.96 volts. So the voltage across the voltage source in this case was a negative 4.96 volts. And similarly, we're gonna maintain the same polarity from positive to the negative in the current. So in this case, we'll disconnect one of these. Let's go ahead and disconnect the current source. Uh, excuse me, the resistor. Check that out positive five volts because now, excuse me, positive five milliamps because the current is actually running from this through that resistor in that direction. It's the exact opposite orientation. We haven't actually changed any of the electrical dynamics. All we've changed is the way that we measure that. Let me repeat this. This is gonna be a theme that comes up. Every circuit element has two variables that we're gonna measure and model the current running through the element and the voltage drop across the element. Each of those variables has a reference direction for how we collect that information. We can assign those reference directions arbitrarily throughout the circuit, though we are gonna stick to some rules. First rule is when we have voltage sources in our circuit, the reference direction for the voltage drop across that is gonna match the actual direction of that voltage source. In other words, the positive direction of the voltage source will be identical to the positive direction of our voltage value in the reference. Same thing with the negative. So those two directions correspond exactly. Second rule we're going to set up is when we define the positive to negative reference direction for voltage drops, that will always define the corresponding reference directions to the current. And we say the current will always run from the positive to the negative. So the tail of the vector starts at the positive, goes down through the negative. Some electrical engineers will bristle at this, and I'll repeat it again. Because the actual current runs out here, a lot of electrical engineers will run the direction of the current this way. We're, not, we're gonna avoid that because eventually we're gonna work ourselves up to modeling circuits with tens, if not hundreds of circuit 
elements. And when that happens, it's actually not possible a priori before we investigate to figure out which direction currents will be running for all elements in that circuit. And so what matters most is not what is the physical electronic behavior of each element, but when we define the mathematical variables, which direction are we going to say is positive current flow so that we can interpret the corresponding measurements that we get out? Later, those measurements are going to be replaced with modeling so that we can do math rather than physically measuring circuit variables. In the next video, we'll go ahead and up the ante a little bit, make this a little bit more interesting. I'll see you in the next video.